calling the meeting to order. It's uh, October 13th, I'm sorry, April 13th. It's a meeting of, of the Haverford Township Planning Commission of April 13th. April 13th. Um, is called to order. Uh, Margie, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Present. Ms. Dobbs? Here. Mr. Capuzzi? Here. Mr. Fiordimondo? Here. Mr. Garrett? Mr. Montresor? Ms. Phillips? And let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The agenda includes uh, the first item, 774 Lawson Avenue, a proposal for a minor subdivision plan. Uh, is there anyone here who would like to speak on behalf of the proponent, the applicant? Good evening. My name is Chris Yarn. I'm the civil engineer for this project. I've prepared the plans. And so let's switch through here. This is page three of the plan set. Uh, there's an existing home there with uh, on Lawson Avenue uh, with a detached garage on the left. You can see a, a driveway with access to that. And there's a vacant area on the right-hand side of, of the lot. There's some steep slopes in the back shown with some cross hatching. And so the existing home and garage are scheduled to be removed as well as those trees that are marked with the red X's. And what's proposed is for the lot to be subdivided into two lots and two new homes to be built. Uh, those are single family homes with a, a one car garage and a single width driveway. They each have decks in the back and small porches in the front. And so this first sheet, this is what we call the illustrative site plan, uh, just showing the impervious, the property line, the green areas, the existing trees that are to remain, as well as a few proposed street trees. The second sheet is the record plan. This is what would be recorded at the Delaware County Courthouse. Sheet three is the existing conditions plan that I started with. Sheet four is the grading and utility plan. Uh, and so you can see we, we added some color here that shows the electric lines in red, gas in yellow, water lines in blue, sewer lines in green. We also show the proposed stormwater management systems, which are shown uh, in front of the lots. There are uh, all of the downspouts are directed to those underground stormwater management systems, and that goes for, for both. Uh, and then some, some grading, which essentially the, the houses are pretty much the driveways fairly flat in the front. Um, and so the house is really set where the first floor is just a, a little bit above the street level, and then all of the grade change happens on the side of the lots uh, to get down to essentially a walkout condition in the back. Uh, page five are the stormwater management and other construction details. Page six are the erosion sediment controls. We have a topsoil stockpile on the front, construction entrances for each driveway, tree protection fencing, silt fence, and then last sheet seven is the uh, erosion sediment control details. And so we submitted these a few months ago. We did go to the Shade Tree Commission. I believe that was in February. It was February or, or March, I forget at the moment. Uh, we, did, we were recommended for approval at that meeting. We did receive a review letter from the county as well as the township engineer. Uh, the township engineer's letter is essentially a, a will comply letter. Um, we've actually made the revisions on, uh, on our plans. Uh, I did not resubmit those yet. We weren't going to do it in time that uh, the township engineer would have another chance to review or you would see it. So I thought I would wait to resubmit until after we got through this meeting and if I needed to make any other uh, minor changes, I would do that. Did you, uh, excuse me, did you, uh, since that March 6th letter, have you met with or spoken with 
the township engineer? I have not. Uh, and so, like I said, it's a, a will comply letter. We're not asking for any waivers or variances. I'm happy to run through the letter, uh, comment by comment, if you'd like. Um, but if not, I'm, I'm also happy to answer any questions. Um, just a preliminary, I think you probably need to go through the, the letter. I know it's okay. a lot of items, but uh, I think they all need to be spoken to, mostly. Okay, no problem. The, uh, one question I had was on the drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to clarify, there's an A, B, and C lot. Could you explain what the A, B, and C are? So that's, um, go to this existing conditions plan. That was really how the parcels were described in the deed. Uh, this was part of, I believe it was called the Penfield subdivision from the early 1900s. And my understanding is most of those lots were 25 feet wide. Uh, some of the lots have been consolidated along the years. Some others haven't. And so those parcels, A, B, and C, are how they were uh, described in the deed. Uh, essentially, all of those property lines are to be extinguished uh, and we're coming in for a new subdivision. Um, basically, Haverford has the same process whether you have a, uh, what you call it, a subdivision like we have or reverse subdivision. However you do it, we have to go through the same process. So those were, those show the separate parcels as described in the deed. And those parcels, as in the deed, are not buildable lots. Is that what you're saying? Uh, the parcels B and C individually do not meet the current uh, zoning requirements. And so then I'm, I'm happy to go through the letter. Uh, comment number one says the applicant should provide documentation indicating conformity with the median setback line of the existing structures on the same side of the street within 300 feet of the proposed construction. Uh, and so we did that information. I'm going to say that we've done some of these. It, it's obviously not on the plans for you to see yet, but we have looked at these calculations uh, for the setback, and it's less than the 30-foot required setback, so there won't be any change to, to where the front of the houses would be. Uh, number two, the proposed driveway on that, each side. That hasn't been submitted yet. Correct. Yeah, we, we haven't submitted any. I made the revisions on our plans in the office, but we have not submitted any revised plans to this point. Um, number two, the proposed driveways on each lot do not appear to accommodate the required two parking spaces for a single family dwelling. Uh, the app should clarify if garages are proposed. There is a garage proposed for each lot, and so you'd have one car in the garage and then one car in the driveway to meet the two parking spaces. Both those garages internal to the houses? Yes. And those aren't shown on the drawings, uh, I believe. Th they're not hatched. If I can use this hand here the you know the garage on lot one is is right here at the end of the the end of the driveway and then the garage on lot two is right here so there is a, a garage that they're what we'll call an attached garage is part of the building uh, and so there's a the, one car garage just to clarify that section of the code um you're not allowed to have stacked parking each of the parking spaces need to be independent of the other okay and that's true with the garage space as well. Yep, because you can't pull one out and okay. leave without yeah, the other car being there. Okay. Okay, we can uh, make the adjustment to include some paving uh, in between the two driveways so there's enough room for cars adjacent to each other. Number three, retaining walls within the front yard shall not exceed 30 inches in height. Uh, right now, I believe on lot two, we show a boulder retaining wall that is four foot high max, so we will revise that so that it's no more than 30 inches. Comment number four says the applicant should confirm that the proposed dwellings are located outside the steep slopes. Construction of a dwelling within steep slopes is a prohibited use. Um, and so they are located outside the steep slopes. We can provide uh, maybe some clear hatching to, to really more clearly show that they are outside of the slopes. Um, Number five. As I read four and five, they're related. Yeah, number five, it appears proposed improvements will require some level of disturbance to the existing slopes. 
uh, indicated the applicant shall delineate the areas of disturbance on the plan and provide the percentage of slopes on each lot that will be disturbed. And so you're not allowed to have the building in slopes, but my understanding is you are allowed to have a minimal amount of steep slope disturbance. And so we will provide calculations. I believe it's a 15% maximum when we had gone through that. Uh, I believe we're at about 13% to give some breathing room around the structure. Um, and so we'll provide those calculations on the next set of plans. Number six, the plan should indicate Lawson Avenue is a state highway, SR 1050. Uh, we will comply with that. That also means that we'll need a PennDOT permit, uh, a minimum use driveway uh, permit for each driveway, which we will do. That'll cover you for item 16 as well. 16 okay. is the yes. permit requirement? Yes. Uh, number seven, horizontal site distance should be indicated for each proposed driveway. We, uh, we will add that to the plans. Number eight, the cartway width for Lawson Avenue should be identified on the plans. We can add, that's typically on there, but we can add that to the plan. Number nine, approved yeah, planning. Number, well, yeah, I'll wait, I'll hold my question. Okay. Number nine, approved uh, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection Sewage Facilities module or exemption is required. Uh, that's a, a will do. We've actually made the request to uh, Upper Darby Township, which is where this flows. We have not receive their letter yet, but we need their letter to then go to uh, the city of Philadelphia to get their letter, and then we go uh, to the township to get their sign off, and then we'll send it to DEP. And so we are still waiting for the first step to be solved on that. Which is a module or an exemption? It's an exemption. Uh, number 10, monuments are required to be provided at right, right of way lines at corners and at angle points. We will provide those. Number 11, shade trees are required to be installed a minimum distance of six feet from the inside edge of the sidewalk or right-of-way line. Uh, we had shown them six feet behind the sidewalk, so we just need to shift them another two feet to get six feet from the right-of-way. That's what we'll do. Number 12, the shade tree commission should review all proposed landscaping and tree replacement. Uh, they did that. Number 13, infiltration test is required to be conducted at the elevation of the proposed infiltration uh, surface. Additional testing shall be conducted for the proposed infiltration facilities on each lot. And so we will do that. We did one test uh, in the rear of lot two when we thought that's where the stormwater system would be. Uh, but then as we went through this design, we thought it was more appropriate for the systems to be in the front so that we wouldn't have to cross those steep slopes. And so we will do additional testing for that. Uh, number 14, a limited disturbance should be indicated on the plans. It is shown on on this sheet six as a, a yellow dashed line, but we can we can make that more clear with our uh, our resubmission. Number fifteen. The orange line. Yes. Now, number fifteen. Additional information should be provided regarding installation and maintenance of the proposed above grade rainwater conductors. It may be prudent to lower the elevation of the infiltration beds to allow for underground installation of the rainwater conductors. We'll provide some additional information on how basically they're going to hang the uh, the downspout uh, on the side of the house. And so I'm sure you've seen that before where it comes down and then along the side of the foundation, it, it hangs along the side. Um, number six, and that's just on, on the sides of the house as the front will, will be underground. Number 16, a uh, penned up highway access permit will be required for the proposed driveway and utility installations. Uh, that's a will comply. Number 17, the plan should indicate whether the existing sanitary sewer lateral is being utilized for lot one or new lateral connection is proposed. Um, we will clarify that. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, um, but we will make that clear. Number 18, please clarify whether the proposed cantilever decks are supplemented with any ground anchorage. We'll provide additional information on that. Um, we know that we can't disturb the steep slopes to install those decks, so they will be supported uh, from the house, or if there's any ground anchorage, it will not be uh, over the steep or in the steep slopes. Number 19 says the details should be provided for the proposed boulder retaining wall. We will do that. Number 20, the minimum longitudinal length of depressed curb for private driveway openings is 14 feet. Township design standards, the depressed curb details should indicate the same. In addition, the plan should indicate the replacement of the sidewalk between the proposed driveways and associated aprons. And so we will show that distance. 
uh, on the plans and show that portion of the sidewalk to be replaced. Number 21, the applicant should consider an alternative route for the proposed electric service for lot two to avoid a significant distance within the right of way of Lawson Avenue. So electric service is one of those that we often show what we think is best and then PICO basically does you know, whatever they think is best. So we'll coordinate with PICO on what, on how, on how they will do it here. They're basically gonna drive the bus on, on that. Um, number 22, the metal lid on lot one should be identified. This is, it's a metal lid here behind the deck. It was an old septic tank that is no longer in use. And so we will note that to be uh, properly abandoned or removed in accordance with the regulations. Number 23, if approved, a grading, drainage, soil, erosion, sediment control permit will be required for each lot. Uh, that, that's true, um, and we do have to, we did submit the permit application when we submit the subdivision plans. That's part of the township requirements. Uh, I'm sorry, you said you did or will? We did. It's somewhat of a formality that, you know, noting that has to happen, we, and we... We understand that. Number 24, BMP maintenance agreement shall be executed in contrib contribution of $2,200 per lot to the Township Stormwater Control and BMP Operation Maintenance Fund shall be made. Uh, and so we understand that as well. That uh, fee is typically paid uh, right before the grading permit is issued. And so those are the comments from the Township Engineer. Would you like to speak as well to the um, comments of the Delaware County Planning Department? Okay. Um, yes. So the Delaware County Planning Department basically uh, makes some statements. And so they talk about what the current proposal is, the site characteristics, the applicable zoning, um, the existing nonconformities that are there with the existing house and how it doesn't meet uh, the front yard setback and some uh, side yard requirements. Um, they say their next item is compliance. They're saying that this plan complies with the R4 sewage facilities. We went, uh, I went over that with, that was a comment from the township engineer. We know that's something we need to do and we're, we're in the first step of that. Uh, next is stormwater management, which basically defers to the township engineer. And then uh, they have a, a long one about historical and archaeological Archaeological significance says the house at 774 Lawson Avenue was built between 1913 and 1920. In the Penfield section, the Haverford Township Penfield was developed in the 1910s and 1920s by Clifford Harmon and Company to appeal to commuters who would use the railroad. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is talking a lot about the house um, that's there and surrounding and neighborhood. And so essentially what they're what they're asking is, they're saying it'd be prefer preferable if the lot could be subdivided and just one house built in the new parcel and retain the existing building. Any new building should be sympathetic to the historic character of the Penfield development, as many infill sites have over the years. If demolition of the house is inevitable, then Delaware County Planning Department and the Haverford Township Historical Commission would like to document the building prior to demolition. Most of the buildings in, the Pen in Penfield are not in the historic resource survey, but they all contribute to the character of the neighborhood and the township. And so uh, we would provide uh, photographs of the existing building uh, as requested. Um, Um, and so I think that that's it. We uh, and then the last item they have is is recording, saying that uh, once the township has confirmed that the plans conform with the code, then we need to submit plan signed plans for recording at the Delaware County Courthouse. And, and that's it. Um, but I'm happy to answer any other questions. Um, turn to. Public comment first. Is there anyone else here who would like to make comments on the proposed subdivision? Uh, there are neighbors here. Start on this side. Okay, you go ahead first, please. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yes. Thank you. 
Hi, good evening. My name is Ellis Eisen. I'm an attorney. I represent 10 neighbors, uh, none of whom is here tonight. Uh, we're in opposition. We're in opposition to the request for uh, the application to be granted. The reason the other neighbors are not here is because I was not informed of the uh, scheduling of this meeting, although the township has been aware since June of last year that I and my neighbors uh, opposed the development of Lawson Avenue. Uh, I came here with the request to uh, ask you folks to continue the hearing to another date since I heard about it only by chance uh, scrolling through the township website and seeing that the hearing for Lawson was posted yesterday around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I did not have time to prepare. I did not have time to gather my group of neighbors. Uh, and therefore, as I say, my intent was to request for a continuance. But I recognize that would be inefficient. Uh, all these fine folks have shown up. Uh, the applicant and, and council and uh, uh, engineers have showed up. So I merely request at this point that a decision not be made before a second or an additional hearing uh, takes place, at which time my clients can make their voices heard. Can I answer any other questions for you at this point? I have a question. Yes, sir. Were you not notified that no, the sir. meeting was, you were not? No, sir. You live within 200 feet of the development? I do not. Then there's no notifications that we would send out. The township requires that everyone within 200 feet of the development be notified by certified or regular mail? Uh, mailings that we are able to uh, prove were mailed. So certificate of mailings is, is fine. Uh, certified mail is good. Something that the post office shows that were actually mailed. So um, I'm assuming then none of your clients live within 200 feet of the development? That's correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll just say in response, if I may, that uh, Ms. Kirk has been aware of our opposition since at least June of last year. And um, I understand if the ordinance says that, that's fine. Uh, lawyers have uh, certain uh, positions that they can take, and uh, I'll reserve the right to do that at some later time. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, <clears throat> My name is John DeSena. I live at 805 Lawson Avenue. What's your last name, please? Cena, spelled Y-A-C-I-N-A. -A. And um, uh, some of my neighbors here with me today also live on Lawson and uh, adjoining local streets. And uh, we're here today because we understand there was a first, a first plan proposed for this site development was to renovate the existing home and build another home on the lot adjacent, which would be lots B and C for this plan that you show up, up on the screen. And I realized there was a, a list of variances required to allow that to happen. Uh, our primary interest here is in conserving the existing house because of the fact that it is a stone structure that the dish don't build anymore, and it is emblematic of the character of the neighborhood that makes Penfield neighborhood in Lawson Avenue, the beautiful place it is to live. So we'd like to, whatever can be done to preserve that home is, is, is in the interest of the neighbors that live in the neighborhood and on that street. Uh, it seems to me like there was some discussion about steep slope and a variance to accommodate that by the builder. Um, it seems to me that there may be a way to do that on the secondary lot for lot two where the second home is, is proposed to be built. That's not my wheelhouse. I don't, I don't, it's not my issue. I'm primarily interested in preserving the existing structure and the existing home. If something can be done to accommodate that, the neighborhood would be grateful for that. Uh, I don't know what else we can do to make that happen or what, you know, it's, I know it's a function of the legal, pro legal process and variances and what's allowed and what isn't in the township, but Issues like, for example, the setback, if it's been that way since 1920, it, it can't, how can it be an issue now in terms of developing the property if you're not going to, you know, reduce the setback, but simply build a second story up vertically 
the setback remains as it was, so I don't see it, how that's an issue. But regardless, I just wanted to make it clear to you that the local neighborhood would like that existing home to remain in one form or another. So that's all I had to say about that. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Steve Finley, F-I-N-L-E-Y. Uh, I live at 758 Lawson, uh, which is exactly on the map. It's exactly uh, next door to what was uh, Henry Carr's home. And uh, Susie Hohenbach is here tonight as well. She lives on the other side, so you have both of us uh, present. Uh, I guess I wanted to start by just asking again, uh, you spoke of the Delaware, what was that? The county, the, the Delaware County Planning Department. And if I understood you correctly, uh, which is information I did not have until you spoke, they themselves, or, or that, that body has also recommended where possible to preserve uh, the original structure. Um, two or three things uh, here without going on too long. There is a, a lovely, for instance, arts and crafts um, garage that currently sits between the existing structure uh, of Carr's home and my lot. And when you actually look, it's interesting there, I've never quite seen this quite so clearly, that steep, if that's a steep slope marker, you can see a slope marker directly from the proposed newer home down into my lot. Lawson Avenue comes down hill. Um, I, I think I also have another neighbor on the end. Yes, yes, it's here at the very end. Lawson Avenue comes down, in fact, kind of bottoms out next door to me, one further house down. Um, and so I am, at, there's, a, there's a concrete wall. I don't see any acknowledgement of this on the plans. There's a concrete wall that was built uh, by car, I think, I, at least 30 years ago, which drops off on that property line. So I am uh, just uh, not desperate, but very concerned. When I saw the original plans, the preservation of the house and the remodeling of it would preserve not only those lot lines, but it, of course, would preserve the garage, which gives me that kind of light and air well, which is going to be you know, obviously profoundly removed if a large home is built literally 10 feet, right, or some, some slight factor beyond that on, on, on my property line there that you can see on the upper, upper left corner, right? So um, this is the worst solution for me, um, not only, and again, I appreciate uh, my neighbor, uh, John Yassina, uh, reminding you, uh, or, or just reminding all of us, um, and it's interesting, may or may not be relevant. My home is an old stone home, um, very much on the model, although it's larger than uh, cars. That home, the car's home, actually has the original stained glass, for instance, in the chimney uh, windows. Uh, it, it has beautiful oak inside. Uh, it would make a wonderful home to renovate. And from what I've seen of uh, Mr. Posado's work in our neighborhood, he, he really does skillful renovations. So it, it just seems I would make an appeal that if possible, we cannot demolish that home and create even further problems. I'm, I'm worried that that lot between me, uh, the space between me and this new home might even become a kind of water well, uh, given that I'm lower. Uh, and at the same time, we lose that home, we, we lose the the stone, we lose the, the architecture from the 1920s. Um, and this second proposal, this one here, just seems uh, aggressive to me in a way that I would just like to make, make it clear that I would very much hope we could go back to the original proposal uh, and preserve, if at all possible, that lovely stone home. Uh, and again, as, as Mr. Yasina said, I, I really have no input on that uh, other other lot of, of what happens, but but it seemed to me that was an acceptable solution in a way that this does not. Thank you. Thank you. 
there any other comments? Hi, I'm Joe Reed. I live at 714 Lawson. Uh, the last name is R-E-E-D. Is R -E -E -D. Um, just looking at the plan, I'm not going to reiterate. I share the, I share the sentiments of, of my neighbors about preserving the old home and renovating it. Um, the, my house, uh, 714, was also built in the 1920s and has been renovated several times. It's a gorgeous house, both on the outside and also on the inside. They've been able to preserve, uh, preserve built-ins. They've been able to preserve hardwood. Um, and yet, when we moved in 10 years ago, we were able to put an, put an addition on the back, add additional space to make it more livable for a more modern family. And um, if we can do that, um, I don't see why we would demolish a gorgeous home. Again, just, again, just, just reiterating, adding to the neighborhood, adding to the look and feel. Uh, you drive down Lawson, the houses are all unique. There's no, there's, you know, there's no, uh, there's nothing cookie cutter about the neighborhood, and uh, demolishing one of the unique houses in the neighborhood, and just to just to build a uh, two modern cookie cutter houses next door, you know, j just next to each other, it just seems sort of the opposite of what's desired in the neighborhood, um, kind of what brings people to the neighborhood, what makes it attractive especially when you have so many families that have done a lot of work, a lot of renovation on existing structures uh, quite successfully. So that's all I, have to, all I have to add to my neighbor's comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is John Calhoun. I live at 615 Penfield Avenue, about two blocks um, from this site. I support Mr. Finley and Mr. Yusina's objectives. I actually have a straightforward question and I doubt I'll have any follow-up. I would like to understand um, what the uh, steep slope requirements seek to achieve. So, Steep slopes um, are sensitive natural environments where you have a steep slope, and so if you cut into that slope, it creates cause for erosion and destabilization of the slope. So the purpose of the ordinance to limit the uh, disturbance to steep slopes is to protect that slope from erosion um, and maintain its integrity. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Um, my name is Alex Volkov, uh, Volkov V, like Victor, O-L-K-O-V. I live at 734 Penfield uh, in the neighborhood just a block away. Uh, I live in a home that uh, Mr. Spasato renovated. Um, he did an absolutely incredible job. Uh, it was, it's an old stone house, not too dissimilar from the existing structure. Um, it was an eyesore for the neighborhood, and now it's absolutely beautiful um it is he did such a masterful job uh and as an as the owner of the house and our neighbors we, we couldn't be happier with the work he did um and so the proposed you know i support the other neighbor's proposal for him to renovate um the existing structure and then add another home next next to it um i don't think there would be i don't have any objections with him adding another home next next door but would love to see him renovate this house and you know the neighbors that you're hearing from today live on this street live in the neighborhood it was my understanding that part of the withdrawal from the june proposal was due to objections from neighbors that um the first uh, public um, commentator represented um none of whom live in the neighborhood they live in winwood so i believe that it is our neighbors who actually walk past this house who live on the street um, it's their opinions that should hold some weight to the decision, not people that live, you know, several blocks in Winwood across Manoa and never would drive by this house. So, thank you. Thank you. I, 
that this uh, tape is available for uh, advertising purposes. <laughs> At a fee. Uh, hi. Nice to see you all. My name is John Bateman. I live at 786 Lawson Avenue, and I am a neighbor to all these fine people here, and especially uh, Susan, who's my next door neighbor, on uh, what I believe is the left side of lot two. So I would be right about where you are, sir, on the map, I believe. Um, there is something to be said for the character of this house. Um, it is one of the reasons that me and my family decided to move in to this area, going through that neighborhood and seeing how, and I was discussing this earlier, how none of the houses are, are like the other houses. I'm a high school teacher at Radnor. I do s tend to see the same trends kind of over and over as I'm sure we all kind of do, but there is a sense of newness and a sense of similarity that does kind of track with that newness. But there are older things that really stand out, that really show character and handcrafted and have remained for so long because they're so well-crafted, because they're so beautiful, because they're so strong. This was one of those houses. I would stare at it every time I would walk by with my son, and he would always try to run inside the door. He's three. He just likes to run, really. But, um, I think keeping it in its style is very much something that uh, I care for very deeply. But um, also the uh, second lot. As I've said, we drove by the uh, previously renovated house. And it is very nice. It is very well done. But it, it is a new house. It looks new. The second house, I wonder if it will look just like a new house. Or the next house. And I realize I'm somewhat loath to tell someone what they can do on their own property that they bought, but Perhaps it's the Irish in me. I just don't like an absentee landlord. Um, but I do stand with my neighbors on this. I think that uh, the stability and the sanctity of uh, 774 is pretty sacrosanct to me. And I believe should remain. And any additions that need to be made on that can. As for the second house, I'll... Uh, Reserve judgment, I think, for now, but um, not hoping. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Regina Connect, and I live at 818 Marion, which is the second from the corner, and the house next to me faces these lots. And my house is a similar style to that, and I've lived there for 37 years. And we bought the house because we liked the fact the neighborhood was so diverse in the type of buildings that were in it, same as everyone else here is saying. And that house is semi-similar to mine, at the mine's also stone. I have not been in that one, but I know from the amount of, like the wainscoting in our house and the wood floors with the inlaid wood and the different things in the floor, you hate to see craftsmanship like that disappear. And I mean, I, I think if there's any way they could leave that building and then still build a second house, it would keep the diversity of building that we have in the neighborhood. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susie Hollenbach. I live in the, the building on the right, uh, 780 Lawson been there for about 37 years, I think. And I just want to reiterate that it's, it would be a sin to knock that house down. It's beautiful and it adds to the character of the neighborhood where every house is unique. So just adding my voice to that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robert Whitney. I live at 1100 Larchmont, uh, which is up the street from uh, 
these uh, various streets, Penfield and Lawson, that go down the hill. And uh, we were, we've been there for over 20 years now. Uh, we were attracted to this neighborhood. I used to walk you know, throughout the uh, township to keep in shape. And I loved to walk in the Penfield area. And it was because of the beautiful architecture of the houses. I remember walking up Hearst, and we were looking for a house, and I saw my house, which is currently my house. And I just love the architecture. And uh, the whole neighborhood has a character to it. My house was built in 1910. It was one of the first houses in the neighborhood. Um, there are several 1910 houses on my block. And you know, th from there and through into the 20s, 26, 28, when the rest of the neighborhood was built, there was still a high quality of stone uh, craftsmanship and using uh, you know, oak construction and beautiful uh, touches on the insides of the houses that uh, I think would be lost. Um, and once you start building modern house after modern house, and then it breaks up the whole neighborhood, and the whole value of the neighborhood goes down, I think. Um, so I would wish to see the original house, the stone house, kept. Um, if you want to build additions to it or raise a second floor on it, um, that would be fine. But uh, at least that house, to keep the character of the neighborhood, I would want to keep, see that beautiful craftsmanship that is no longer available anywhere, not in this country. Um, it would be gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. All the pieces, all the stone, every bit of oak, oak flooring, um, gone. Mahogany highlights inside the edges of the floors of the house and the high old uh, um, baseboards, everything gone. So I would, I would love to see that kept. Um, I understand that the, the builder has, uh, respects uh, the neighborhood and has good quality work, but I would like to see the original uh, essence of that stone house kept to keep the neighborhood's character. Like I say, once it's gone, it's, it's gone. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Kristen Rudolph. I'm at 722 Lawson. Um, sorry, I was a couple minutes late. Um, I just your wanted last to... name, please, Chris? Excuse me? What is your last name again? Rudolph. Rudolph. Thank you. Um, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, I have young kids. We live in the neighborhood. Uh, we were definitely drawn to Penfield. It's a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood, beautiful street. Um, uh, I know that the contractor has done beautiful work and has a very wonderful business, I'm sure. But again, with all of my neighbors, it's really just about the integrity of where we are and where we live and, and keeping that. Um, and as the last gentleman just said, you don't find that in new construction. Um, no matter how hard you work at it, it's just not the same integrity of what was once there. Um, and I would like to keep the diversity and the, the culture and the structure of what our neighborhood is. Um, so that's just my two cents. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Seeing no other comments from the public, uh, is there anyone on the Planning Commission who would like to comment or have questions? And, would you like? Well, we have, you know we all do. Okay. Can we start with Angela? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chris, uh, as far as the median setback goes, you do guys, you do have a note on the drawing that says what the median setback is. I don't okay. know if you're aware of that or not. Uh, it's on uh, sheet two. It's twenty-six point seven feet. Okay. Um, as far as the steep slopes, uh, and looking at the topo, uh, at least to my eye, it would appear that you have not only steep slopes, but very steep slopes. Uh, and uh, so I, I would suggest that you take a, a closer look at your contouring and your designation of steep slopes to make sure they're accurate. Uh, especially in parcel B, you have a steep slope shown on parcel D that run into parcel B, but they're not designated steep slopes on parcel B. Okay. Um, a comment that talks about the um, partway width for Lawson Avenue, number eight. Uh, 
it looks like it's going to be, it's only 24 feet. So you are going to have to ask for a waiver for a cartway width, unless you want to make the road comply with township standards. And I also uh, don't see the right of way width for Lawson, but it looks like it's only 45 feet. So you may have to ask for a waiver for the requirement of having a 50 foot right of way. Uh, I have a real concern about hanging six inch diameter PVC pipes off the side of a building. And I'll tell you why. First of all, I think it's an eyesore. Uh, secondly, you're gonna have forces in your collection system that you don't normally have. Um, you're gonna have uh, water coming down the downspout and hitting a pipe, and that's gonna create forces from the thrust of the water going down. So you're gonna need to have some type of significant anchoring system there to make sure that the <laughs> downspout, water from down, uh, downspout doesn't blow that pipe off. And I just think it's an, an un ugly look. And my question is, it looks like you took a test bit in the back of one of the lots. Uh, why, why aren't your detention systems in the back of the property? So for the, the downspouts, and so we didn't show that clearly. We wouldn't put the six inch uh, PVC on the side of the building. We would do that with just the gutter, turn the gutter, which um, I feel like is, is somewhat common where you see it come down from the gutter. You see the downspout come down and then it turns on an angle and goes on a slope. So that's what we, but we can. Forces are still going to be the same. That's true. It's still, you're going to have, it instead still of needs pipe, some. You're going to have the gutter anchor. hanging on the side of the house. Yeah, typically it happens down by the. Uh, Thing. On the foundation. So why not have the septic or the seepage beds in the back of the property? Uh, because it would require a variance to go through the slopes. Not a variance, condition, uh, special exception, okay. which is a different standard than for variances. Uh, but from an engineering standpoint, it makes a lot more sense, I think. You're right. Um, you're right. It's a special exception. It does require us to go to the zoning hearing board, which this uh, does not. How much of the, if you were to take um, I don't. I don't know what the roof lines look like on these proposed houses. But if you were to take the uh, gutters and run them from back to front, how much of the actual roof area could you pick up? If you had no downspouts on the back, you understand, just run everything to the front. Could you pick up a significant portion of the roof area? Yes, I think okay. we could. I mean, at, at this point, um, so typically in subdivision process, the architect doesn't go you know, 100% drawings. And so they, they haven't gone through all that yet. And so we, we typically show something that we have confidence, you know, we can prove to the township engineer that we can get enough, but we would certainly work with the architect to uh, reduce the number of gutters coming down in the back and get them to the front as much as we could. My, my thought is if you could get as much of the roof into the front without putting down, uh, gutters along the side of the house, you could compensate for what you don't pick up by picking up the runoff from the driveways. Uh, and the, uh, the old septic tank, you said that would be either filled in or removed or whatever is required in accordance with current regulations, correct? Yes. Okay. One other thing, and I only mentioned this because I knew the gentleman. Um, reference plan number one notes you talk about, comment number six talks about a reference plan made by, you have Marriott Meekins. It's actually more Zet Meekins. Okay. And I know because he yelled at me one time. <laughs> I will never forget that. Okay. And Chuck Faulkner, you should know, he's part of Pannoni history. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. I have uh, one minor comment, and that is regarding the boulder wall. Is that for aesthetics, or is that uh, something that is in the design of the actual layout of, of, the, of the grading? Because the contours, if it is a, re a retaining wall, the contours don't show anything about a retaining wall in that area. Yeah, so it, it is, it's the 
sometimes a little hard to show because you have the existing contours which are shown by the dashed lines. They're coming in on the steep slope side and then in the front yard area it's flattened out and so that contour doesn't continue through. Um, it's raised up and so it is more for aesthetics so that we keep the, well I shouldn't, it's, it's both. Um, most builders like to have the front facade be some have somewhat of an even plane and not see a big drop off on the side so that you have more foundation exposed and so that's what the boulder wall would do is hold up more of that grade in the front of the house so that you don't see as much of the facade uh, exposed but wouldn't the contours have to show that that's what's happening as it's going into the retaining wall yes and i can check to see if we're missing a contour but i think it's that the contours from I'll say the bottom right hand side uh, are the existing contours which stay and go in there and so they're showing it come down and on the front side uh, or on the side near the driveway it, it's flatter and so there isn't actually a contour there and it's that the contour is going away and so you know what was this is turning into this uh, but but I can I can make sure I'm not missing a contour thank you I have no further comments Sure. Um, okay. I was just about to look up because I don't think we talked about tree replacement. Because I know you're taking out some. Was there any notes here about tree replacement for, or is the are the street trees compensating for the trees coming out? So the I believe we have a note. I don't know how to zoom in on, on this. But, what page um, is it? It's page three, and so I believe it's on the right there underneath the title block, but we did go to the Shade Tree Commission, I believe, and we, we don't get credit. Street trees cannot count as replacement trees. Um, and so we either didn't need any because of the existing, um, and I think that says three there, so I, I think, I'd have to check my notes on what, what happened at the Shade Tree Commission. Because it looks like you're removing one, two, three, four, two six inch cedar, seven inch maple, ten inch maple replacement. So it says total trees required three trees. Did I did you show them on the plans? We did. My recollection is that um, and so Similar to revising the plan for the township engineer's letter, we didn't resubmit after we went to Shade Tree Commission. My recollection is we did have to add a couple trees, and they approved uh, what the what the species were at the meeting. And so I do need to add a couple to address their comments. All right. And then I just generally had a question. So if, and I apologize, I don't know the history. It sounds like a couple of the residents were commenting there was a variance application last year that was withdrawn. Is that correct? Yes. Can you provide an overview of what that application was for? Yes. Do you like me to do it? Okay. Um, so the application was to preserve the house and build a new house on the right-hand side uh, in the, the open space in the lot. The proposal was to, and as one of the other planning commission members asked between the parcel A, B, and C. It was to basically use parcels B and C and keep that as the new lot. It was a hair short of the required 6,000 square feet. It met the 50-foot lot width, but if I remember right, it was like 5,983 square feet. It was 17 square feet short, something like that. Um, and so that was one of the variances. Uh, another was disturbance of the steep slopes because in using this smaller envelope, um, you know, to get a, a reasonable house size, there would have been some disturbance of the slopes. And then there were a handful of variances for the existing home. If you see on this sheet, the, the porch is in the front yard setback. Uh, the house has, uh, the code allows um, overhangs. 18 inches or less to not count because these overhangs are bigger. They were, I forget what they were, two or three feet. Um, they do count as the building. And so then they were too close. So we needed a side yard variance. Um, 
the detached garage is supposed to be behind the building, so that was a bit, so there were a handful of variances just to keep the existing home uh, in, in the location that it was. And then if I remember right, the ones for the new lot were that de minimis lot area and some disturbance of the slopes. Okay, and is that because the ordinance has a requirement that if you're subdividing a non-conforming lot, the existing lot has to come into conformance with the codes? That's correct. Okay which is unfortunate because I think that would be a preferred solution for everybody because one of the things, as we're working on the update to the comprehensive plan, one of the key things that keeps coming up are these you know, death by a thousand cuts infill developments that we see. I think every single person who lives in this township moved here because they love the diversity and character of the housing stock. I intentionally moved here because I didn't wanna buy anything that was built pre-1960. So. I think that's, it's a shame that the ordinances are structured in a way that makes it really challenging for a developer to come in and do what I would say is the right thing to do for the community and results in the loss of one of the, you know, character defining homes on a block. Um, Cause that was my, my main question. Cause it looked like if you did consolidate BNC, they might be slightly short. Um, now, do you have renderings of what the proposed homes would be? Not yet, okay. So, I mean, there are some good examples in the township of infill development that maintain some sort of community character. So um, I think that there's a number of items in this application that would still need to be addressed. I am sorry to hear that the variance application didn't go forward. Um, so was it that you then withdrew it because you were concerned about the number of variances and receiving the denial? Or did you go through with the variance and it was denied? Yes, that's true. Um, thank you. Good evening. Uh, Fred Fromhold, I'm an attorney. and I rep Fred Fromhold, I'm an attorney. I represent uh, the applicant, uh, Vince Pizzotto. And to answer that question, um, as you know, uh, the original plan was to preserve the home and we had filed the application seeking all of those variances. Uh, we never got started really with the zoning hearing, but we did appear in the first instance before the zoning board and there was considerable opposition, um, perhaps not so much from the Lawson Avenue, but from others who had an interest in the application. So the question then became for Mr. Spizzato, do we uh, go back to what we thought would be a, a by right subdivision of uh, this property, or do we venture forward uh, with the original plan, which was to preserve the existing home, and uh, risk uh, being tied up for a considerable period of time. And you know from your experience, it can be a couple years or a few years before you actually get back to a, a subdivision application. So uh, he made a decision at that time that uh, he really didn't want to have that risk of the cost, the expense, the delay of uh, a zoning application that would be uh, uncertain as to its outcome, but it would be, at the time, fairly certain as to the time it would take to uh, process that, not only before the zoning hearing board, but uh, we made the judgment that it was likely that there would be court appeals and uh, that factored into it. So uh, that's what uh, brings us here with this plan at this time. Uh, if, if, if magically uh, we could have those variances in a reasonable period of time, uh, obviously that would uh, uh, factor into uh, Mr. Spizzato's judgment, but uh, uh, we don't have any guarantees of that. So uh, I guess initially, Mr. Spizzato's preference was to salvage the existing house and just build a house next door to it. That's correct. That's his preference then? Uh, uh, it certainly was at the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, given the intervening circumstances and the judgments he made as to potential delays, that's what caused him to come forward with this plan. Yeah. Can I interject with a question? Sure. There were comments that, the, and your comments were that the um, objections came from uh, citizens, not from the zoning hearing board. And there were comments today that the residents came from 
fading from Wynwood. Um, was there any ruling that the proposal was withdrawn and not ruled on? Was there any ruling on standing of the opponents? Uh, there was not. We didn't get to that point. There were a number of people who had identified themselves and their addresses. Uh, we were not at the point where we would uh, have, in normal course, raised objections to standing. Uh, you don't know how the zoning board is going to rule on them, and the, the zoning board uh, makes its initial ruling. You, you have to object to standing before the board if you want to preserve it as an appeal issue. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, the zoning board's ruling either way would uh, necessarily stand up on appeal. Uh, we would have raised those arguments had we gotten to that point in the hearing. But we, it never really opened. Um, so. Well, I'm sorry to hear that because I understand it's a business decision and I understand that there was concern about the the fact that this could be prolonged if it was denied and then there was an appeal and so on and so forth. So maybe, uh, Kelly just left, but for, stating for the record, I would advocate that we consider how our zoning ordinance impacts properties like this to better provide flexibility and how we can allow for the preservation our, of our existing housing stock without applying the rules that all non-conforming lots when going through subdivision have to come into conformance with the code. I find that onerous and obviously it's resulting in the potential loss of a beautiful home. I mean, is the home itself otherwise viable? Is it in good shape? I mean, from a structural standpoint, architectural standpoint? Uh, Vince, do you want to address that? Uh, sure. It means a lot of work. Could you could you state your name, please? I'm Vince Pizzato. I met you many times before. Hello. Um, in terms of the home, um, it has it does have a lot of desirable architectural uh, details. Um, not all of them can be preserved, but we you know some of them can be preserved. So um, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said some stuff wasn't sound or you know could be preserved. I mean, there's a lot of like termite damage in the floors, for, for example. Um, but a lot of it can be, a lot of the character can be preserved, um, particularly on the outside of the home. Is it possible to reuse some of those building materials for the new home in a facade? In the facade? I, I really have to look at it. Um, the, facade, the facade's been capped over a lot too. So, right, there's, there's, there's already aluminum. There's, there's aluminum on those. Station, right over there a lot but on the head right right so I mean yeah it's it's kind of a work in progress when you do it um, but uh, we do try to maintain the character as much as possible um, when we do this we take everything into consideration and then in terms of the architectural style of the proposed homes would you be looking at mimicking the roof line or the or any of the other features that are present in other homes on the block the I mean I know when I know with front-loading garages, that yeah, that I by know, itself just <laughs> destroys me. Um, but is there a way that you can mimic those roof lines? Um, to a point, we can, yes. And that would be our intent. Um, you know, we, we, we do look at, you know, the cost of building is pretty expensive these days, but we do our best to, um, to try and match the neighborhood as possible. The homes are always going to be new. I mean, we can't get away from that. But um, we, can, we do try to give it some... Uh, authentic architectural details. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess just to wrap up my statements, um, just to reiterate my disappointment that the business decision resulted in the withdrawal of the variance application before it even had a chance to be heard. I, I mean, to listen, it's your business, it's your property, but to not even see where it takes you and to abandon your initial ideal for this alternative is a disappointing outcome for the community. Mm -hmm. If it has to come through for a demolition and a subdivision for a new home construction, my recommendation is to try to create as close as possible a housing architectural style that pays homage to the neighborhood character because that's one of the things that, as one of the gentlemen said, once you lose it, you can't get it back. I have a street uh, 
the street over from me where this beautiful old house was taken down and two Toll Brothers houses were put up in its place. And it's absolutely incongruous with the neighborhood. It's a complete disaster, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so, and I don't think that you're gonna do that necessarily, but just to reiterate the, um, the importance of maintaining that community character in these subdivisions because the, the value of this township is in its housing stock and it's really important to make sure that we maintain that as best we can. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so my first question is, so the existing home is one of the bungalow styles in the neighborhood, meaning that it's more of a one-story construction when you enter along the street, and then it probably is, because of the slope, open to two stories in the back. Is that true, like two stories above grade in the back and one in the front? A anyone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I think the character. The character of the whole street is like that. Yeah, there's, there are basically, I would call them walkout basement. Can you come to the yes, could, could you please yeah, speak from the mic? The reason that I'm asking that is because when you talk about the height, the maximum building height of the future lot one and lot two, the only thing I could find was you were just saying it would be less than the maximum 35 feet. And I was just wondering if you could speak to your, what your plans are and what your idea in the height and the number of stories in the front and the back as far as what meets grade. Are you talking about the new homes? Yes. Okay, so um, from what I understand, and um, engineers can correct me, there's a median there's a height of 35 feet, but it's also measured around from around the home, so that dictates the height the height of the home. Correct. Um, so you're really you're limited to how high you can go at the home, right. but it's not it's not just like building on a flat lot in this case. So the house in turn will become a little bit lower because you're factoring in the slopes in the back as well. Right. So you know, 100 years ago, whenever these homes were Built, there were no steep slope ordinances there were no you know different ordinances like that um but if that answer i don't know if that answers your question didn't. so <laughs> without um, without committing to a height okay. in the front and the back could you at least give us a visual of how many stories it would be in the front and then how many would be open to grade in the back would sure it, it would be would two stories in the front okay. and the 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 basement would be exposed in the back so you probably would come like a walkout basement okay. in the back so basically mm -hmm. Okay, that answered that. And then I also just wanted to reiterate my concern with the tearing down of the existing historic home that is within the character of the neighborhood and it represents one of the older and more traditional styles. And as well as the quality of the craftsmanship, the use of the historic Wissahickon stone and everything that comes along with that. So that's all I had. Thank you. Um, uh, we have another comment, if we could keep it fairly short. Yes. So it seems like there's a lot of uh, agreement from the Lawson and uh, Penfield and Larchmont contingent here that are very close to the house. And we all want to preserve the character of the neighborhood and the architecture. Um, it sounds like the original meeting, which I wasn't here and probably practically nobody was here. Um, I saw the original proposal uh, that would preserve the character of the, the original house. It would have a new house next to it, but it still would be better for the neighborhood and the architecture and the, the value of the neighborhood. I would ask um, that um, you know, uh, your uh, clients, and maybe you could bring this to them, would consider, because I don't know their motivation as to why they would not want this. But consider that first proposal. And the concern seems to be that people would fight the first proposal, and this one would be easier to get through, but it would be less desirable for the people that actually live in the neighborhood. So I wonder, um, not knowing, again, the motivation of, of you guys, if you guys could see fit, to just take this back to your clients, uh, to talk about whether um, the first proposal would be more desirable than the second as opposed to maybe fighting both, or maybe the second proposal was a worse alternative than the first, just to take it back to your clients and just consider um, that most people don't seem to 
not, it's not the best thing to have a second house, you know, there, but, you know, I could see it, you know. But the first house, that would be a compromise. But if it's going to be cause years in court, that would not be a, in anybody's best interest, I think, unless you just don't want to build there at all. So, um, or just want to keep that one house. But I don't know if that's even a possibility. So I would just, if you would consider that, to take it back and maybe there could become a meeting of the minds here. Just by way of uh, clarification, the, there was never a meeting, as far as I know, there was never a meeting before this body, uh, the Planning okay. Commission. I think the only uh, aborted meeting was before the uh, Zoning Hearing Board. Okay. I did see the original plan. <laughs> there was a, a plan with the original house. And Understood. The, the, the original plan that you're talking about was before the Zoning Hearing Board when they were seeking variances. Okay. This is the Planning Commission. Oh. Different board, different do, has different duties. Trying, I, I understand. I didn't know any of this before I started doing it myself. <laughs> um, so this board doesn't have the authority to grant the variances huh. that were being sought at the Zoning Hearing Board. So that's why we're here with this plan that's requiring less, fewer appro approvals as in the way of variances or special exceptions. But this board doesn't have the authority to grant those, only the Zoning Hearing Board does. So they would have to go back to the Zoning Hearing Board to approve the original plan first and then come back. Got it. Got it. I used to work for the federal government, so I'm used to this kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and Very quick you have thank spoken, you. so please yes, try to keep it brief. for being so gracious as to grant this. I, I just want to say, um, I, I, quickly, uh, it just seems um, fundamentally unfair that this firewood group, for whatever reason, has resulted, perhaps, in the destruction uh, of this home. And I don't know what their motivations were. I don't know why. He said 200 feet from the existing structure. And, and we were completely cut out of the loop, even though we're the people that live there. Good. Thanks. Thank you. I just, uh, if they do go back to the zoning board, do you see how important it is for you residents to show up at the zoning hearing board and let the zoning board members know your feelings, okay? Apparently other people are convincing the zoning, well, not they didn't get that far, but it's, if you're really interested in saving that property or that house, you need to speak up at that hearing if they go back. Uh, and if you do go back, Fred, um, you might want to come before this board again just to ask us for our opinion that we could forward to the zoning board as far as the recommendation goes, okay? Yeah. I don't know if we'll carry any weight or not, but at least you might get some support from the board as far as preserving the house. Another thing to remember is that <clears throat> the township is currently working on a new comprehensive plan, and one of the things we're addressing in that plan is infill development. And the objective of, of the changes we're suggesting is that any new development respect the character of the existing neighborhood. So you might want to keep that, or developer may want to keep that in mind also. Right, and, and that certainly goes to the uh, the architecture. And, you know, with respect to the other plan, you haven't seen it. So that, I, I don't know what our Mr. Spasato's uh, decision would be, but if it were for under any circumstances to uh, take the original plan to the zoning board, uh, we would indeed uh, appreciate your seeing it and your commenting on it because, uh, you know, while Mr. Yan described the variances, it would be important for you to see on the plan, uh, particularly with regard to the steep slopes and how they would be impacted, uh, what uh, Mr. Spisato is proposing on that plan. So we, we won't want to presume that you would necessarily be supportive of it until you saw it and reviewed it. Of course. Yeah. Um, and in addition to the comments you've heard tonight and the sentiments here, uh, there's also this, as you know, the statement of the Delaware County Planning Commission, which was pretty, very strong in, in their preference. I'm assuming that what you're you're proposing tonight, uh, Mr. Yan, is that you, you make the uh, you, you meet these various concerns, meet with Chuck Faulkner, and then represent at an, an, a later meeting the 
um, more complete proposal. Thank you. So I assume we're going to try for May 11th? Probably pretty prepared to do that? Yeah. Chuck, what are you looking at? Uh, one to plan on three weeks, Chris, if you could possibly do that. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, so tentatively May 11th, if you can make that work. If not, we're looking at June, whatever the second Thursday in June is. And we have to be mindful that 90 day clock also. Oh. We, we, we want to be sure if you need time that we give you the time. Thank you. We're not looking for a deemed approval here. Did, did uh, you file an extent or a, file a time extension? Or are we within our 90 days? I'll check with Kelly. Uh, if you need a time extension to evaluate this new plan and for your recommendation to pass up to the commissioners, we'll grant that extension. <laughs> uh, just one thought occurred to me. Um, and I haven't discussed it with Mr. Spisato, but it would seem to me that it would make sense if we do come back and as we plan and present these modifications to you on the plan that you've reviewed tonight, that we also at that same meeting present to you the original plan and talk about that as well so we could get your input on that plan if that would be agreeable to you. I think it would be a great idea if it's agreeable to everyone. All right, we'll plan is, to do that then. Is the proposal then to the, the original? Two, pro, I'm sorry, but would the proposal be to present two side by side subdivision plans, uh, or is this a, more like a sketch plan for us to well, comment? Uh, put it this way: we'd like to see how you react to that original plan. If if you look at that original plan and you have material issues with it that are not fixable, then that would help. Uh, Mr. Spisato, uh, with a decision, will say to move forward with this plan. On the other hand, if uh, that plan would uh, be something that you would be supportive of the plan, although it requires variances, then he would, I think, uh, take that into consideration in making a decision as to how he proceeds. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Good. Thank you very much. Just one last concern, or there's, there's always a lot of concerns, but one, one I wanted to mention was the, the cantilevered uh, decks. And you say there'll be no support other than building support. That's my understanding of what cantilevered means. But it seems to me there would, both in the building of the houses and the decks, there's going to be a need for additional disturbance of slopes. So in your, as you're working on the next uh, iteration of the plan, I think it's important to consider that and address it. Thank you. Any other new business? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We got minutes. Ah, oh, the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes that have been circulated? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes from our last meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. The minutes Just for are approved. Uh, to reiterate, uh, tentatively, this uh, this ca or case this uh, agenda item is going to be continued until May 11th. Um, in the event that they do need more time, it will be uh, probably the June meeting, but aim for May 11th, all right? Great, thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll take a motion to, uh, we're, still, uh, we're still meeting, Mr. Framholt. Fred? I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Do you move to adjourn? Any second? All in favor of adjourning? We're adjourned. <laughs>